Okay, so welcome back to um, our videos. So we're looking at carbonyls again, and this is the next section. So we're on page 12 of our notes. Okay, so this is page 12, and this is the uh, hydrolysis or reduction of those nitrile compounds. So we left the last session um, adding doing nucleophilic um, addition mechanism of HCN to a carbonyl. And we've said that that increases the carbon length. So it's a very useful reaction. But now we've got that nitrile group on there, we want to be able to do things with it. And one of the key things we can do with it is to hydrolyze it. So um, I'm going to draw out the um, mechanism, or at least I'm going to do the reaction for the first bit, and then I'm going to show you the second step as well. So first of all, forming the hydroxy nitrile. So again, just to remind ourselves, we're doing HCN in the presence of KCN to ethanol. So we start with our ethanol molecule. So we'll just draw that one in. This is basically just a reminder from the last lesson. So I've got that dipole on this bond, so I've got delta negative, and sorry, delta negative, delta positive there, because we've got electronegativity difference between the oxygen and the carbon. We've got our cyanide ion with the lone pair on the carbon, and that's going to attack that delta positive carbon. So I'm going to draw my double head arrow there. And it's going to push the P electrons out and on to my oxygen. So I get my intermediate, and I've now got my C triple bond N on, so I've increased my carbon chain length by one. And this carbon still has that oxygen on it, but it's now an O negative with a lone pair. Okay, so in step two, so that was step one. Step two, and I'm just going to draw this sort of down to the side a bit. Okay, we've got this reaction. So I've got my HCN molecule. Again, I've got a typole here, delta positive, delta negative. This lone pair is going to grab that delta positive hydrogen, pushes the electrons completely onto that cyanide group, and I get my product. So I've got my hydroxy on uh, my second carbon. So this would be two hydroxy propane because now I've got three carbons in my train nitrile and I've regenerated my cyanide iron. So that's just a little bit of a recap um, of the first um, couple of pages that we did. But now we've got that I can uh, now do something quite interesting with it. So now I've got the nitrile group I can react it further with HCl in water. It's important this is dilute hydrochloric acid because I'm doing hydrolysis. So hydrolysis here, I'm using water in my reaction. So here is the full reaction. I'm using HCl in water, so aqueous HCl, and I'm changing the cyanide group here into a carboxylic acid functional group here. Now this works for any cyanides. Uh, this one is just a straight cyanide, not a hydroxy cyanide, but it works with, with pretty much anything. Uh, any of the, the cyanide groups. So I've got my displayed formulas here. So I've got that cyanide group. And I'm only really interested in the organics, so I'm just going to draw the organics. And that's going to add some HCl aqueous, in other words, hydrochloric acid in water. And I'm going to get my acid. I'm going to get propanoic acid. And that's a very useful reaction to know that I can change nitrile into a carboxylic acid by adding dilute mineral acid, dilute hydrochloric acid. Okay, so we need um, to be able to do syntheses in chemistry. Um, you're expected to be able to do up, up to a four step syntheses with no help. So you're expected to turn one chemical into a different chemical. Now this is the first one of these you've seen. So we're going to start you off quite slowly um, and we're just going to do a two step. Uh, reaction. So I'd like you to pause the video now and have a go at turning propanol into 2-hydroxybutanoic acid. Okay, hopefully you've paused the video for long enough and uh, you've had a go at that reaction and I'm going to go through it with you now. So we're going to start with propanol. 
it's an aldehyde, it's al. So I start with my aldehyde here. In the first step, I'm simply going to react it with HCN and KCN, and I'm going to make the hydroxy nitrile. Notice I've now got four carbons in my chain, and that second carbon has an OH group on it. So remembering, we're numbering from this end because this is the highest priority group. So this is carbon number two. So it's two hydroxy. And then I've got one, two, three, four, butane, nitrile. Okay, so that gets me that. Then, I'm going to miss out that bit, then I just want my dilute hydrochloric acid and I want to warm it. And that's simply going to change it from this into my 2-hydroxybutanoic acid. One of the ways I know that I'm going to go via this hydrogen cyanide step is because I'm going from a probe to a bute. Now there are other ways of doing that and we'll look at those when we look at Grignard's reagents, but one carbon on the chain, especially as I'm starting with an aldehyde, kind of um, leads me down the path that I'm going to be using HCN and KCN in there somewhere. So my final product is 2-hydroxy, when I've added my dilute hydrochloric acid and warmed it, I've got 2-hydroxy butanoic acid. And I've changed that cyanide group on the ends into this COOH group. The OH group has not been affected by the dilute acid. In organic chemistry, it's always a good idea to treat each functional group separately and see if there will be any change to this group and then if there will be any change to this group. Okay. We've done lots of the reactions. Now what we have to do is test for the carbonyl group. So this is the first of the little practicals. Now there are separate videos for each of the practicals, um, but there are also really good videos out there all over YouTube, which will show you these in more detail. But I'm just gonna run very, very quickly through um, what happens. So these are condensation reactions. So I'm eliminating a molecule of water in this case. Um, sometimes you get HCl here as well, but this is specifically a condensation reaction, so I'm removing a molecule of water. You don't need to know this. This is just um, a little bit of extra, um, just so you can see what's happening. But this is my aldehyde, or my ketone, and this is my 2,4-dinitrophenol hydrazine. Okay, so it's 2,4, because my nitro groups are on 2 and 4. 2,4-dinitrophenol, um, uh, which is this group here, hydrazine. And this is my hydrazine molecule, okay? But you don't need to know this reaction. What you do need to know is that this is an orange solution, this 2,4-DMPH. These uh, aldehydes or ketones are pretty colorless. This is what we're interested in. This is always a precipitate, and it is usually an orange precipitate. And you'll see that on the video when we do that reaction. So we can identify individual aldehydes and ketones from their 2,4-DMPH derivatives. So we call this a 2,4-DMPH derivative. So it's an orange precipitate, an orange solid. So what we can do to identify the individual carbonyl compound is this method. Okay. So what we would do is filter off the precipitate we would dissolve it in the minimum quantity of hot ethanol. Now this process here, this is called recrystallization. It's a very good way of increasing the purity of your compound. So we do this a lot in organic chemistry. And it's a technique that you're going to learn about when we do organic synthesis. But for now, you just need to know that it's a way of making the crystals as pure as we can get them. So once we've got our pure dry crystals, we can measure their melting points. Now, um, we know a lot of the 2,4-DMPH derivative melting points. Uh, people have done um, loads and loads and loads of these. So we pretty much know the melting point of every, um, uh, uh, every carbonyl uh, derivative melting point. So all you need to do is um, do the recrystallization, measure the melting point, and basically go and look it up. Okay? So this 2,4-DMPH identifies the presence of a carbonyl. Now, please be careful. That is an aldehyde 
or a ketone only. It does not identify things like carboxylic acids. It does not identify esters or anything else. It only identifies these two, aldehydes or ketones. Well, now we've got the fact that we've got an aldehyde into ketone because we've got a positive 2,4-DMPH test. We now need to find a way of distinguishing between an aldehyde and a ketone. We're going to do that on the next page. So we can distinguish between an aldehyde and a ketone very easily. There's one thing that aldehydes can do, which ketones can't. So aldehydes can be oxidized and they can turn into carboxylic acids. Ketones, on the other hand, can't be oxidized. There's no reaction there. And that's basically what I'm using to distinguish my aldehyde from my ketone. So I'm looking at adding an oxidizing agent. And if that oxidizing agent works, if the, if the substance can be oxidized, then it's got to be the aldehyde. If it can't be oxidized, it's got to be the ketone. In other words, my aldehydes are all reducing agents. They can be oxidized. And they're oxidized always to a carboxylic acid, to a CO. OH, so they're oxidized to a carboxylic acid functional group. Okay, so SNL will be oxidized using an oxidizing agent to ethanoic acid. And that's the um, test that I'm going to use. The only thing I'm going to change between the three different tests is I'm going to change which uh, oxidizing agent I'm going to use. So there are three different oxidizing agents which work for aldehydes and don't work for other compounds. Okay. So the first one we're going to look at is failings. Um, those of you who do biology, this is very, very similar to Benedict's solution. So basically what I have in here is copper 2 plus. Now, copper 2 plus is a relatively good oxidizing agent, and it's going to oxidize my aldehyde to a carboxylic acid. Now, it does this in an alkali solution, which is why you end up with the salt here and not the free carboxylic acid. But if you notice is what's happened to the copper, the copper has gone from a plus two oxidation state and here is down to its plus one oxidation state. So this is a blue solution. And this is a red precipitate. OK, so that's how I know the reaction has happened. I've gone from a blue solution and it's made a red precipitate. And again, if you look at the video, you can see that. OK, the next test. So I'm, gonna, sorry, I'm just going to write out this one. So propanol. Again, I've got three carbons this time in my longest chain. And I'm going to react it with um, my failing solution. So I'm actually going to add this in because it's, it's very easy. It's exactly the same reaction as before. The only thing that's changing is I'm going from the ethanoate to the propanoate salt. So I've still got C, 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 double bond O, O negative. OK. And I've got my Cu2O, my red precipitate, and some water. OK. So I've got that as my overall reaction again. OK. Now, the second one is um, one of my prettiest ones um, and again we've done a video of this one and you should be able to see it and this is propanol um, this is what we call the silver mirror test so here we've got uh, what we call a monocle silver nitrate so this is um, silver dissolved in ammonia we call it Tollins reagent and this is a colorless solution and it should make silver OK, and that deposits on the uh, side of the test tube. And again, you can see that in the uh, little video. Now, there are two possible results for this one. You could get a black precipitate. 
Hopefully, you won't, you'll get a silver mirror. Okay, so check out the video there. I'm not going to do that equation, it's the same as the as the one above. You can add that in yourself. Now the last test, um, it does work and it will work um, with my aldehyde. You just need to be a little bit careful with it because potassium dichromate is actually quite a strong oxidizing agent, so it will oxidize other things. However, if you've already done your 2,4 DMPH test and you've worked out that that's positive, you've narrowed down your compounds to it being either an aldehyde or a ketone. So then you can use this oxidizing agent, even though it's quite strong. And the reason you can do that one is because, well, you know that a ketone can't um, be easily oxidized. So if there is a positive test, in other words, if it does go green, then um, you'll know that you've got an aldehyde present. So I'm just going to finish this video off by doing the um, dichromate reaction at the bottom of the page, because again, it's one you need to know. So it's Cr2, O7, 2 minus, and you've got to balance this up. So remember, you're going to have 14 hydrogen ions and 6 electrons, and we're going to 2 Cr3 plus, plus 7 waters. And I can check that by making sure it balances each side in terms of um, atoms and electrons. Okay? So... Okay, so that's that section finished. Um, I suggest you check out the little videos that we've done on the um, reactions on the next couple of pages. Um, but as I said at the beginning of the video, there are lots and lots of good YouTube clips on the reactions of the carbonyls. So do check those out. But make sure you've got down the results. Uh, make sure you don't know the color changes, what you're looking for for positive and negative tests and make sure you've got all the equations on the next few pages. So we're going to pick this up uh, again in the next video on page 19, and we're going to look at the uh, iodoform reaction. So um, keep working hard. Remember, this pack needs to be updated by Friday. Um, so you've got lots of resources. There are um, there is these um, videos, but there's also PowerPoints, um, lots of other resources available to you. So keep working hard and I'll speak to you soon. Bye.